it made me complacent. What am I doing at 21 deciding where my entire career trajectory is going and sticking ah, yeah, to retail? Yeah, 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 I had no yeah. business. And I also wish I spoke to my mom and dad about it more because I know they'd have said no. We, okay, farmer's you know, choice. Yeah. Still, I, I in the flowing there's yeah. lessons. Yes. So I'm not going to jump over this farmer's choice like it is nothing. Yeah. You man, you're making three Gs. You yeah. will just come from sixty Gs. Imagine. <laughs> okay. Well, it it took a bit of time before I went back to work because remember now it's internship. So yes, but what was the but, but, um, um, yes. So when you're doing the internship, what's this like? What's that environment like? Hey, I knew how to panga sausages. Like, okay, let me tell you, joining farmer's choice, one of the first things orientation is you go to the factory. Farmer's Choice is the cleanest place I have wor ever worked in in my life. Mm. They don't take that stuff like a joke. So there's yeah. a dip before you enter. When you get into the factory, there's a dip for your gumboots. If they see what, any issue on your coat or your shoes, you're sent out. So they take hygiene so seriously. So that was something absolutely perfect to me. Then the first thing is you go and see how those products are made and packed. So right now I can tell you what to buy and what not to buy because mm. I know exactly what goes into those things. I'll tell you later. Oh, yes. <laughs> These guys are good. <laughs> the things you can understand. Yeah. So I, I, I did a lot of the packing, of burgers, meatballs, and stood how those things were made, met and interacted with people, any workers of the country. That was good. Yep. That was good to see. Um, then I moved. And this is not your white collar jobs that we're saying. This no, is not no, management no, no, guys no, in no, suits. No, 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 this no, no, no. is. I've not gotten there yet. This is you're, you're a factory worker. Yes. You're there from seeing the pig being electrocuted to it becoming a burger. <laughs> yes. <laughs> It was very humane. <laughs> the humane. <laughs> mm, like, from oh. even seeing the sows coming in, being weighed, being told because this is an old pig. That I'm like, wow. Understanding the value chain of where your sausage comes from. Mm. That was a brilliant uh, experience for me. Because see, I'm also adventurous. So I really enjoyed that as well. Yeah. So, yeah. And even the people that you're working with. Yeah. So now you're getting to interact with these people. Yeah. I am. But of course, granted, because of the privilege of my dad, I was still interacting with the white collars in the office. Mm. So it was, you go pack, do, mm, then go have your lunch. They used to give us free pork and free cabbage and free ugali, and then you yeah. go back to work. Hey, you and cabs still together. Uh, my friend, I'm telling you, it was, it was foreshadowed. <laughs> uh, it would be me and cabbages forever. <laughs> Let me tell you, right now, even in my house, you won't eat a cabbage. I'm done. I don't see those cabbages there. Even in calls, you'll get that shit up. I don't see no cabbages. I'm done with that. Please. <laughs> Give me oh, kale, please. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'd like some kale and spinach. Um, so how long are you in this internship? Internship was, uh, what, three, three, four months. It wasn't long. It was just for school. But then I remember saying, I'm finishing school. Can I come back? This is where I also learned that. Remember I told you, even in GTV, I was taught how to ask. Mm. So I was like, can I have work when I come back? And I was given the work. And you want, my I question is, why did you want to go back? The money. I had a job. I had a job. I wanted to keep working. I wanted to keep having a job. You know, let, let me just say that. You know, I f I'm going to cut right now yeah. into a place where Caroline Mtoko right now says, it's a job. It's a job. <laughs> I had a job. I had like, a job. It's farmer's choice, mm -hmm. Ivy. Mm -hmm. For you, a job at this time is a job. Mm. And sometimes you got to do what you got to do. Mm. Wow. And I enjoyed it. It wasn't bad. Oh, you enjoyed it? I actually enjoyed it. Remember also, part of this internship, I've gone and done merchandising. There are days you'd be called and told, oh, the supermarket, Uchumi Langata, the fridge broke down last night. So you have to go and remove everything, everything. Put it in freezers and then go back the next day and, and uh, arrange them once more. You really get to understand, I don't say the small person, but you get to understand that person in that supermarket. Yep. So sometimes even when someone tells me, oh, can I talk to you in the supermarket? I stop because I used to be that person. Serving ham. Hi. Uh, you sample? We, yes. Do you like to sample ham? There with your hair net and whatever. Ivy, this experience was holistic. Mm. It's not, you, you got to understand the, exactly what you said, the mm. full value chain mm. from the pig all the way to the store. Exactly. So on Monday morning, you can finish having a conversation with MD and your day is finished uh, clearing up in a supermarket, washing utensils after you've done sampling of smokies and, and mini bites. Mm. Yeah. It was important. What, what is it that you liked? Was it the, tr the fact that you're not sitting behind a desk or was it what? I'm trying to figure out, okay, what is it that you like about this? Mm, yeah, that definitely. Definitely not sitting behind a desk is one thing. But also saying that I work. Mm. I like saying that I work. I work. Where? Farmer's trees. 
So that's just a joke. Mm. Monopoly. Mm. Yep, yep. I hey. work. Mm. So I enjoyed that as well. Um, actually, that's it. Let me not lie. Okay. I just like having the status and power to say that I was working, especially coming from another job. So at least now I have another one also. Okay. Yeah. So you finish school? I finish school. I go back to pharmacy now properly. Move up the chain. I, I become what, what, what a sales the, and management like trainer. graduating? Oh. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh. I mean, it was just a day. It was just a day. Um, but it felt good. After four years, I think, yeah. I can definitely say it's those milestones where you feel like Whoa, a sigh of relief. I'm done. You're done with the uni. Mm. And then it's asking yourself, okay, what's next? Mm. What do I do next? Where do I go? What do I, okay, what do I do next? What do I do next? What do I do next? Other than, of course, partying, enjoying celebrations and everything. And you know one thing I remember regretting from graduation is telling my mom, I want a small party. Ah, if I went back and I've got to, I make bash. this the biggest bash ever because I, so, I got cash on the day. I was like, you mean if I just had a hundred more people here, I'd be rich? I'd be so rich. You never had your goal. Ah. And I think that's the first time I took money and put it in like a savings account in the bank. Okay. Although at the time also, when I started working officially, is when my mom introduced me to financial literacy from the point of insurance. She handed over the insurance to me. She was like, now you have a job. I've been paying your life insurance. This is the process. Fill these forms and start paying your own life insurance. Mm. So I started paying life insurance, I think, when I was like 18 or something like that because of my mom. She was like, take this over now. But also when I was in, uh, when I was in uni working for her, I would also go and deposit cash in the bank. So that was also my experience around being in the banking hall. And, that, and I was one of the only few people are among my friends who had that sort of experience. Yeah. yeah. First and foremost, you had life insurance from that age. Yeah. When, you, when I got my first job, my mom gave me the power to pay for life insurance. At the time, it was what? Two Gs? Okay. Or something like that? Yeah. A month? It was a month. But that's not health insurance. We're talking about life insurance. Life insurance, which is one of the most important ones, important ones to take and one of the only ones I have now. Mm. Yeah. For somebody who's watching, yeah. explain why it's so important. If so anything were to happen to, to me, use this for financial literacy as yeah, well. Uh -huh. Yeah. If anything were to happen to me, my children are taken care of. That's mm. why I do life insurance. Mm. If anything were to happen to me, there's last expense, and my folk, my mom or my siblings would not have to worry about uh, mchango for my funeral. Exactly. That's Things what last like expense is. Dignity also. Like, but it's just conti continuity. Or if anything were to happen to me and I can't earn an income, I'm taken care of. My kids are taken care of. Mm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So till today, so what, what? I just kept increasing the premiums. Okay. Yeah. So I today it's quite heavy because I have two kids. Mm. Yeah. And I have their insurance as well. Nice. Yeah. Um, hey, thank you for that. Because, you know, something like life insurance, people pay for it, but you'll never see it. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. It's, it's, it's a decision that you have to understand. You're doing it for the next people. Mm. Granted, sometimes you can't get it if, if you get a... a something but you can there's payouts yeah okay after like right. 10 years yeah i'll never forget my first payout came smack in the middle of covid i was like i remember calling my mom and telling her mom god bless you thank you for making sure i paid for this thing because i got a lose 350 g's in the mm. middle of covid when i had nothing to do and i was like oh my god mm. this is good but again we'll get there damn because you started early in my head i I'm started just, so yeah. early yeah i welcome like yes these payouts yeah <laughs> even insurance salesmen tell you the best time to start insurance is 10 years ago yeah yeah Wow. Financial literacy, people. Yep. I'm telling you, it's worth it. It's important. Um, back to, so you finish? Yeah. You started saving. You open up a savings account. Yes. Or maybe. Uh, yeah. When did you get your first account? I know this sounds like such a simple question, Ooh. but. Man. Farmer's choice. After uni, imagine. That's when I got my first bank account. Yep. Hilarious. Yeah. But yeah, that's when I got it. Okay. Because I needed my salary to go somewhere. Yes. So that like when you're filling in what's the bank account. So you can't keep filling in your mother's bank account. At that at time, she used to bank with family bank. Mm. So I opened my own account at Equity. Yeah. My first bank account was at Equity. How old yeah. are you when you finish university? Um, and what year is this? So I finished university 2005. I started university at 17, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. By 21, you're done with uni? Yeah. Hey, Ivy. Yeah. You were I young, eh? when I was, yeah. So 21, give or take 22, because my birthday is also at the end of the year. My birthday is in October, remember? Yeah. Yeah, and you graduate around September. So maybe I was, I was just about turned 22, but yeah, by 21, I was done. Wow. Yeah. You're still at home, of course. At, at this home, time. but remember at pharmacy. And I know 21 because I remember seeing I was the youngest national sales supervisor ever. So I moved from internship to sales and management trainee 
And sales and management trainee, what I wish I did differently was I wish I was trained in each and every department before settling. So I settled in the retail supermarket department before exploring exports. Mm. And back then, export was so big mm. for pharmacists. I wish I knew. Mm. Do you know what those people order? The hoofs, mm. the ears? I wish I got that experience. But because I had tasted merchandising and retail, I became comfortable. Mm. I didn't want, I became comfortable. In hindsight, I wish I did everything. Procurement, I wish I went on because wow. I had the opportunity wow. to go to each and every department. Quality assurance, everything. But I settled too soon on retail. What made you settle on retail? You had tested it and you had liked it. Familiarity. Ah, uh, yeah. Ah, yeah, just say that again. Familiarity. So familiarity is not always a good thing. No. It made me complacent. What am I doing at 21 deciding where my entire career trajectory is going? Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. I had no yeah. business. And I also wish I spoke to my mom and dad about it more. Because I knew they'd have said no. But I came home three weeks later. Oh, baby, I'm in retail. I didn't, I, I, it's like I also didn't give them a chance to advise me. And I also have to say, it's I'm privileged to have parents who yes. sit and listen to me. Mm. Sometimes I speak and people are like, I don't have this relationship with any of my folks. So for the people who do have a good relationship, that life experience is so important. So I wish I also told them, this is what I'm thinking. What do you guys think? I know 100% that I've said, do not. Go here, go here, go here, go here, then make an informed decision. My decision was ill-informed. Yeah. We can end city on that. Let's go. <laughs> it's been a long day. <laughs> okay. So, you finish university, and I know it sounds like I am keep dragging no, this no, conversation. No, you finish university yeah. with an understanding I have a job. Yeah. So this time it was internship. Yeah. Then you go back mm -hmm. and they and, and literally you have the opportunity to go to this department, this department, this department, figure out where it works for you best yes. with where you where you even see your life going. Yeah, as a management trainee. Exactly. You are training me for management. You know, do you know why that one has touched home with me? Yeah. Because that was my same experience, but now in Barclays. And I also settled. In fact, I hate banking because I settled. You get what I mean? I didn't give the chance to go to these other things. Mm -hmm. So you even though you, 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 the internship showed you what you liked, which is a wonderful thing, mm. but you stopped too soon. I thought I liked it. It's all I knew. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all I knew. Okay. So I had a few friends here and there. I remember my mom telling me, colleagues are not your friends. So I made a few friends here and there. And then I thought, let me just stay here because it's comfortable. Why become uncomfortable? But the thing is, comfort keeps you in the same position. You don't grow comfortable you grow when you're uncomfortable. Mm, mm. So I didn't give my chance, myself the chance to grow. Okay, so what does that look like? What does what does day-to-day -day work look like? Where are you reporting to? Mm. Uh, I was reporting to um, the head of marketing and the mar assistant marketing manager. So at this point in time, because I've settled in retail and whatever, I'm, I'm helping come up with flyers, um, the marketing material. I'm helping organize. Uh, one of our biggest shows was uh, the agricultural show, Nairobi show. Yes. Way. We we used to sell. Just please explain to people Where? farmers' choice. Farmers' choice. People, you know, okay. you said monopoly. Yeah. We're talking about even probably regional. Anyway, yes. just explain farmers' choice. Farmers' choice was the only company at the time. I mean, competition had started coming in with the Kenchiks and blah blah. blah. At the time, that was selling um, processed meats in form of sausages, in form of salami, in forms of bacon, smokies, frankfurters and Viennas. Um, over and above that, and people don't understand this, of course, there's the export side, so they were exporting uh, parts of the cow. And uh, it's actually before I left pharmacies is when they moved also to halal. So they started on the beef side, wow, the wow. beef plant. So I saw that being built and come up, and I saw them um, slaughter their first cow. Oh, cows were different from pigs. There's a lot of blood with cows. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, export, and then there was also, they also had uh, pig pig farming as well. Mm. Yeah, so they also had that. And I had the privilege of w once going to Ashamba, where we had hundreds of pigs, where there was insemination happening to create better quality pigs for now better quality food. So that is farmer's choice. So even people who are in the diaspora, you know, when you ask for sausages, you're yes. given farmer's choice. Yes, 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 yep. It was incredible to, to work there. Honestly. Were you exporting, but... Um, Sausages were not being exported. They were. They were? Yeah. They were exporting everything. Wow. Yes. The export side is something people don't talk about with farmers' choice and it's quite big. Yeah. My yeah. word. This yeah. is not where I thought this conversation was going, but yeah. I love it. Yeah. Um, I like talking about them openly because I was let go from farmers' choice because I I was young and foolish. My, my, just now a random thought. When you see that guy who called, 
with his with his with his car, small truck yeah. selling is that a, is that all farmers choice farmers choice can of course they'll give you product on consignment for example and yeah. sometimes they'll also hook you up with how you can make that little cart so it is part of farmers so choice so they're that involved yes okay yeah that's a different and element help you of retail with how because that's the like mo mobile retail and don't mess around with those people if you're positioned in a good place they sell they sell and kenya is run on smokies kenya is not run on sausages Kenya is run on smoky. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of my marketing budget was around smoky territory. May I remember Kruke yeah. Electric Avenue? Yeah. That and a boiled egg with with kachumbari yeah. you are on. Yeah. It's is real. Yeah. But my favorite farmers choice product sausage wise is premium pork sausages. Mm. Very high meat content. Yes. Uh, ABC. Okay. <laughs> We'll get there mm. when the money flows. <laughs> okay, so how are you finding work? What's what's this like for you? And how long no, I'm managing there? a team now. Mm. There's a point, uh, is it? Uh, You're 21 year old self, 22 year old yes, self. Yes, uh, because I was in charge of getting the sales, the products out of the factory into the trucks. I was at work at 6 a.m. every day. 6 a.m. You have the meeting, the sales and marketing meeting. May I go to the factory and get products out? So I want you to imagine there's, uh, what do you call it? The, in logistics, there's. Um, I wish I remember all these terms. There's uh, where the gate is open, where trucks come and park so mm -hmm, that their mm -hmm. kids can go in quickly. Like the cargo in So I right. manage LPOs. I came up with a checklist system for LPOs while I was in farmer's choice because I realized it was a bit helter skelter. You don't know which supermarket. Oh, yeah. I don't know. I don't know what was happening. So I came up with a checklist system for products and also the, the dif different types of supermarkets for uh, for farmer's choice. So you, in the morning you go, uh -huh, Omondi, you, you have these five supermarkets. This is your route. This is where you're going. These are the orders. Like that, like that, like that, like that. So if things are being delayed in the factory, I go in, talk to procurement, get the stuff out. And then the, 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 the salesmen go, do the deliveries. Then when they, they've gone and I'm, I've closed the factory, I go out. I, I was given the chance of driving a Maruti, but I didn't learn how to drive a manual. I failed my <laughs> driving <laughs> test with that Maruti. Yeah. So I used to drive my own my own car, my mom's car. Yeah. And pharmacists used to fuel it for me. So yeah. you see also how I've elevated a little bit. Mm. Um, so now I go to the field. In the field, what do you do? You speak to management. You find out about sales. You sell new products. So we have this new whatever, um, this new type of ham. Why aren't you ordering it? Give it a chance. If it doesn't sell, it's fine. So you get also those types of orders. If there's a new supermarket somewhere, you go there. Uh -huh. you're, you're even going to the supermarket. So you have to go this, to the supermarket. This is not dis being done through distributors that you have. No. This is you going to the retail store. Yes. Chain, like yes. for example, the Uchumi or the let me use Nakuma at the yeah. time, and speaking to them to get your product. Yes, I've always wondered. Do you have shelf placement? What do you mean? Because me, I try to get yogurt into this place, mm. and I know that shelf placement within some certain supermarkets are owned. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't or have or difficulty or there. So what what happened there is you have to have a very uh, good relationship with the line manager, mm. the person who takes care of that line or those shelves, as you're talking about. Yeah, if you have a good relationship with that person they can increase also your shelves yes yeah but otherwise i never had issues with that because i came in when farmer street was already if you're not okay, buying okay, farmer street okay, what are you okay. buying okay you came in it's those others who didn't know where to <laughs> like where are you like i need to talk to your competitor exactly who are having this problem exactly okay. me, me, me i was easy me, i was very easy but then you are then going to tell them about the new products yeah. that you have yeah mm. Ivy. If there's a fridge issue, the merchandiser tells you there's a fridge issue please go find out what's going happening in this supermarket and remember where did i get this training that's so true. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. That's yeah. why I was able to figure this out because I grew up around shelves and around supermarkets. Okay. Yeah. How is the money at this time? Um, fantastic, actually. Can I ask how much? I think at the time I moved from 3K to, remember, fuel is being covered, and I think my net was around, I went back to my 50, 60K. Net? Yeah. And remember, bad on Ikonamafta, you go home with sausages and stuff every month. Yeah. Things like that. The, the money was good at that and time. And you're living at home. And I'm living at home. So that's net is literally yours. Yeah. Are you saving? <laughs> Am I saving? Oh, it's for all this is party money. No, I'm saving. Uh, I'm saving. But you're saving so you Very don't be broke. You're not but saving, saving for me started after I was let go from Farmer's Choice because I was living the life again, making very, very good money. So can we go to that side now? Yes, 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 yes. Uh, partying still. And then remember, now this is the time, now this is where a boy comes in, unfortunately, mm. the wrong type of boy. Um, so I found myself in a relationship and um, I'll never forget, it was a night we were partying and I needed to be in the office the next day at 5 a.m. I don't think I've ever given this story. 
I was supposed to be in the office the next day at 5 a.m. It was a very big season. It was Saturday. Weekends were so big mm. for pharmacy. So I used to work Monday to Saturday. But I'm in the club. At that time, it was Team 100. <laughs> I'm in the club at 4 a.m. Yeah. In my stupor, I made the terrible mistake of leaving the club without letting anybody know. And I take the car and I'm involved in an accident. Mm. No one was hurt. Everything is fine. I just remember calling in a panic saying, I think I got, I got stuck in a rock. I can't remember. It wasn't a grisly accident. Yeah. But it was enough for me to miss the Saturday and for pharmacists to say, you can't come back. They could already see something was wrong. You could mm. It's okay, go on. You could mess around in that place. So I remember I was just, I was let go immediately. And I deserved it. It looked like you had done this once or twice before. In terms you know, of I'm trying to remember. What I, not, not, I don't think it was absconding my duties. I, I can't remember because I remember before that I had been given a, a, a warning. warning letter. Mm. And I think it was around the same thing. Actually, you're right. I think I had absconded once more because I remember I was given a warning letter. And not just any warning letter, a final. My first warning letter ever was a final warning letter. Mm. So obviously, the next day after explaining why I was in hospital and explaining it was because of stupid reasons, mm. I was fired. Wow. And I remember my dad saying, never let an employer fire you. I mean, I, I was forced to resign. Mm. So I remember he fired. He said, don't ever sign a resignation letter. You'd rather they fire you because of, I don't know, intro. But uh, I was forced to resign. And I went around crying, clearing all my stuff, clearing your coat, clearing your gumboots, clearing product, clearing God knows what. But let me tell you, I deserve to be fired, Richard. <laughs> that was bad behavior. Mm. That was bad behavior. 22, such an opportunity. Mm. Sales supervisor. Mm. You're leading a 50-year-old man. What are you saying? Ah, yeah, yeah. It was yeah. terrible. What, what did you learn from that? One, I embarrassed my dad because it was because of him mostly that I had that opportunity. So when people are able to put you in positions of influence, don't disappoint those people. So I wish I did that differently. Character is seeing you're going to do something and doing it. I said I was going to be a good supervisor and I wasn't. Mm. So there was a big blow to my character mm. there because I could not go back to any of my managers and ask them to recommend me somewhere else. Ouch. They couldn't trust me. So even at that time when you're young, focus on building a solid character. Men and shit, man. Because mm. why was that man with me in the club at that time? He should have told mm. me to go to work. Um, let me not blame the man because that was also just... And I, I like saying this. Like I didn't have any business dating at that age. Mm. this man has, should not have had any influence in my life. He had never been employed. He had no work, nothing. So for me to ha put him on such a pedestal that I lost my job because I'm clubbing, mm. Ugh, Ivy, you, you didn't need to do that. So those are my three key lessons. Yeah. Take a break from here. We hear where the story goes after this. Yeah. <laughs>